When you think of YouTuber made movies, you no doubt think of extremely high quality productions that stand the test of time, like Logan Paul's Airplane Mode, or the classics like Fine Bros F the Prom, and I absolutely need to mention the Masterpiece Fred Trilogy. Fred 1, 2, and 3 is the only cinematic marvel that can even potentially rival the Lord of the Rings trilogy. That's always a debate more heated than Bone-In vs. Boneless Wings, which is better, the Fred trilogy or Lord of the Rings? Now I'm gonna go ahead and drop the sarcasm for a moment. Everyone knows YouTuber movies are absolutely fucking horrendous, downright criminal, basically a violation of the Geneva Convention being subject to a YouTuber movie. But what if I told you that two YouTubers just did the unthinkable, the impossible. They defied our very understanding of science as we know it. They delivered. They made a really good movie. Would you even believe me? You're, you're probably thinking that I, I'm a lunatic that's taking crazy pills right now, even suggesting that a YouTube group could make a good film. But it's the truth. Danny and Michael Filippo of the very popular channel Raka Raka just made a horror film called Talk To Me, and it's actually good. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with their work. They have a ton of huge videos, absolute bangers, like the whole Ronald McDonald saga. And one thing that they've been known for is extremely over-the-top violence and, like, really good action sequences. Especially for being a YouTube channel, their action goes hard. And I'm happy to say all of that talent that they've demonstrated over the many years they've been on YouTube translated to the big screen beautifully. It was really cool to see what they were able to do with a bigger budget. So I really wanted to do just a pseudo moist meter here on the film. Most of you know I love horror movies. Not because I think it's a strong genre with a lot of really good movies in it. In fact, quite the opposite. I love horror movies because there's almost never a single good thing about them. It is just a bunch of fucking schlock that is pumped through the worst ideas ever. I love horror movies because most of the time they are fun bad. There is a never ending supply of trash being added to the horror dumpster and all of it makes me giggle and spit up like a little baby and clap my hands because it's so fun bad. I can count every good horror movie I've ever seen on one hand. My left hand, I can count every single high quality horror film I've ever watched. Until now. I'm happy to say Talk To Me now enters that very exclusive list, meaning I need two hands now in order to convey how many good horror movies I've ever seen in my life. So let's get into it. Now the narrative revolves around this creepy ceramic hand and a group of kids who keep throwing parties using this hand as like a, a wacky event type deal. So what you do is you light a candle, open the, opening the door as they call it, and then someone grabs the hand, and while they're grabbing the hand, they say, Talk to me. And then, once they do that, they can communicate with people from the other side, trapped in a limbo. Basically, they can communicate with dead people. And, they go a step forward, where they invite the dead people into their body to communicate with everybody else and give everyone a bit of a spook and a scare. But they only go for about 90 seconds and then they just take their hand, or well, they, someone else in the party takes their hand and separates it from the ceramic one. And that breaks the connection, they blow out the candle, and the visitor is kicked out of the house. Fundamentally, that's how it works. So that's the whole concept. You grab the hand, you invite them into your body, and they start working you like a fucking puppet. Like that guy out of the first Men in Black movie, the little alien in the guy's head pulling all the levers and says, Orion's belt. That's fundamentally what happens in this film with the spirits. So, eventually, this concept expands where they keep throwing these parties because they really like communicating with the dead. It becomes intoxicating to them. They really love having their fucking bodies piloted like a Gundam. And that leads to a lot of problems where now the spirit doesn't want to leave and the spirit's pretty aggressive because one of the core things they establish that if you go longer than 90 seconds, the spirit gets a little rowdy and doesn't really want to get kicked out anymore. And what they really want to do is kill the host, because if they can kill the host, they get to keep them. So it then becomes a battle of them versus the spirit realm. And it's really well done. Now conceptually, I don't think it's the most unique thing ever. I haven't exactly seen like the whole hand concept done or anything, but there's something very similar in a movie called Flatliners where they get addicted to basically killing themselves and bringing themselves back to life so they stay dead for like a really short period of time so they can see into the afterlife for a little while 
and then eventually that leads to the afterlife coming, you know, out from the after and just into the life now. And that's very similar to how this movie works as well with the spirits. So I think conceptually it's not like the wildest thing. They're not trying to reinvent the horror movie wheel. They're just doing it better than most horror movies that have come before them. Hereditary is an example of what I think is probably the best modern horror movie ever made. And Hereditary completely changed how I perceived horror movies. It went for a very unnerving, tension-building approach that never really lets off the creepiness until the very end. I still think the last 10 minutes of Hereditary is tragic with the direction that it goes. But everything up until then, I think, is just unlike any other horror movie I've ever seen. I don't feel that way about Talk To Me, but everything I see here is the best version of normal horror movie approaches. They take what most horror movies fail to do and succeed. It also really helps that the acting in here is very good. Horror is known for really campy, shitty, phoned-in acting, basically where good acting goes to die, but not this movie. I was really surprised with how well everyone played their roles. All of the characters were very well done, especially the lead. The main character here I thought did an extraordinary job. She was also great at doing something that I feel most horror movie actors and actresses are bad at, which is being creepy when you need to be. So like when the ghosts are inside of her body, she's able to be creepy without it being cringe, where most of the time, a lot of actors aren't able to do that. It just falls flat and gets into goofy territory where you're watching the actor or actress try and be like unnerving, but they just can't do it well. She nails it. She's able to be like sad and vulnerable and happy and outgoing and charismatic and then also flip the switch to be like really like scary when she needs to be. It, it like absolutely crushed it. Really everybody in the film did. So what I think is the most impressive thing about this film and what I really didn't expect especially given how violent and gory Raka Raka's work is on YouTube is that they didn't just go for, like, gross-out gore to shock you and scare you. There is gore here, of course. Don't, don't misunderstand me. But it's actually used in a really great context where it doesn't feel like it's just yucky for the sake of being yucky. Like, ooh, look at all those blood and guts. It always makes sense in this film to the point where, like, it's actually used effectively as opposed to just, like, a cop-out, like, gore, be frightened. It's, it's really well done. Like, it's not just guts everywhere all the time it's used sporadically when it's used it's very well placed and very well framed with the narrative context that it's given and i just thought they nailed that because their main approach to horror isn't just gore and i'm happy to say it's not just jump scares i think there's only like maybe one or two jump scares in here at all which is a very very normal thing for horror movies to fall into is just you know, fall back on a jump scare because people are gonna, you know, throw popcorn up in the air and they get startled and they'll say like, damn, that was so scary because it made loud noises so many times. Which is just a very lame thing. I, I actually don't mind horror movie jump scares, full disclosure, because they're lame. Like, I think they are a fun, bad element to horror films that usually make me laugh. But I think if you're gonna use jump scares as your primary horror tool, you're pretty trash at making a scary movie. And I'm happy to say they don't. Talk To Me does not rely on jump scares. It does what all horror movies should focus on. Anxiety. Unnerving you. Building tension. Being creepy. But not overtly where it's trying hard to show you creepy things like blood and gore and whatever. Like, it, it, it very good about subtly building up all of this tension, all of this anxiety, and letting things really linger. Like, I thought quite a few times in the beginning, this was leading to a jump scare in order to break the tension. But it never does. It just keeps it going, which is great. Now, I will say they do, however, have a couple of, you know, ghostly spirits in here that are very clearly supposed to be, like, creepy looking, and I think those don't look amazing. I don't think they look bad, don't get me wrong, but there's, like, a really silly scene involving one of them crawling around on the floor and then sucking some toes, and I was like, damn, that was not scary. That was just really goofy. This fucking ghost bride toe demon crawls around on the floor and then just starts sucking on one of the character's tootsies. Like, I, 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 it made me laugh, but I don't know if that was the intention of the scene, because the context of that scene is not like, ha-ha moment. It's like, 
scream time. Like, this is, shit's popping off. So that, I feel, I don't know, maybe I'm misunderstanding and it is supposed to be like a silly scene, but that's just one of those moments where I was like, I think this didn't land the way it was supposed to. It's very rare in this film, but there are a couple of instances like that. But I don't think that it is like overall detrimental to the overall product because I think for the most part, everything they do here, everything they set out to do rather, they nailed. They fucking hit a home run here. And they actually just did a pretty good job of just being disturbing. I, I was really invested in the film. So I think it's a, a banger. I'd give it probably like a comfortable 80, maybe even like an 85% on the moist meter. So yeah, uh, they, they did the impossible. This was their directorial debut. And they're YouTubers. And they're doing a horror film. They had so many things working against them, and yet they overcame the odds and delivered a banger. So yeah, that's about it. See ya.